Judges chapter 11. Jephthah called to fight for Gilead. Now Yiftak, a brave soldier from Gilad, was the son of a prostitute. His father, Gilad, had other sons by his wife, and when his wife's sons grew up, they drove Yiftak away and told him, You will not inherit from our father, because you are another woman's son. Then Yiftak fled from his brothers and lived in the territory of Tov, where he enlisted a gang of rowdies who would go out raiding with him. After a while the people of Ammon made war against Israel. When the army of Ammon attacked Israel, the leaders of Gilad went to fetch Yiftak from the territory of Tov, and said to him, Come and be our chief, so that we can fight the army of Ammon. Yiftak answered the leaders of Gilad, Didn't you hate me so much that you forced me out of my father's house? Why are you coming to me now, when you're in trouble? The leaders of Gilad replied, Here is why we've come back to you now. If you lead us in war with the people of Ammon, you will be head over everyone living in Gilad. Yiftak answered them, If you bring me back home to fight the army of Ammon, and Adonai defeats them for me, I will be your head. The leaders of Gilad said to Yiftak, Adonai is witness that we promise to do what you have said. Then Yiftak went with the leaders of Gilad, and the people made him head and chief over them. Yiftak repeated all these conditions at Mitzpah in the presence of Adonai. Jephthah judges. Yiftak sent messengers to the king of the people of Ammon to say, What's your problem with us? Why are you invading our territory? The king of Ammon answered the messengers of Yiftak, because Israel took away my territory when they came up from Egypt. They took everything from the Arnon to the Yabok and the Yarden. Now, restore it peacefully. Yiftak sent messengers again to the king of the people of Ammon. With this response, here is what Yiftak has to say. Israel captured neither the territory of Moab nor the territory of the people of Ammon. But when Israel came up from Egypt, walked through the desert to the Red Sea and arrived at Kadesh. Then Israel sent messengers to the king of Edom, to say, Please let us pass through your land. But the king of Edom wouldn't let them. He sent a similar message to the king of Moab, but neither would he. So Israel stayed at Kadesh. Then they walked through the desert, around the territory of Edom and the territory of Moab, past the east border of the territory of Moab, and pitched camp on the other side of the Arnon. But they did not cross the border into Moab, for the Arnon was the border of Moab. Israel sent messengers to Sishon king of the Amori and king of Heshbon with this message, Please let us pass through your land to our own place. But Sishon did not trust that Israel would only pass through his land, so he gathered all his people together, pitched camp in Yahats and fought against Israel. Adonai the God of Israel handed Sishon and all his people over to Israel, and they killed them. Thus Israel possessed all the territory of the Amori who lived there. They took possession of all the territory of the Amori from the Arnon to the Yabok and from the desert to the Yarden. So now that Adonai the God of Israel has expelled the Amori before his people Israel, do you think that you will expel us? You should just keep the territory your God Kamosh has given you, while we, for our part, will hold on to whatever Adonai our God has given us of the lands that belonged to others before us. Really, are you better than Balak the son of Zippor, king of Moab? Did he ever pick a quarrel with Israel or fight with us? Israel lived in Heshbon and its villages, 
in Aroe and its villages and in all the cities on the banks of the Arnon for 300 years. Why didn't you take them back during that time? No, I have done you no wrong. But you are doing me wrong to war against me. May Adonai the judge be judged today between the people of Israel and the people of Ammon. But the king of the people of Ammon paid no attention to the message Yiftak sent him. Jephthah vows unto the Lord. Then the spirit of Adonai came upon Yiftak, and he passed through Gilad and Manasseh, on through Mitzpah of Gilad, and from there over to the people of Ammon. Yiftak made a vow to Adonai, If you will hand the people of Ammon over to me, then whatever comes out the doors of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the people of Ammon will belong to Adonai. I will sacrifice it as a burnt offering. So Yiftak crossed over to fight the people of Ammon, and Adonai handed them over to him. He killed them from Aroe until you reach Minot, twenty cities, all the way to Aval Karamim. It was a massacre. So the people of Ammon were defeated before the people of Israel. As Yiftak was returning to his house in Mitzpah, his daughter came dancing out to meet him with tambourines. She was his only child. He had no other son or daughter. When he saw her, he tore his clothes and said, Oh, no, my daughter, you're breaking my heart. Why must you be the cause of such pain to me? I made a vow to Adonai, and I can't go back on my word. She said to him, Father, you made a vow to Adonai, so do whatever you said you would do to me, because Adonai did take vengeance on your enemies the people of Ammon. Then she said to her father, Just do this one thing for me. Let me be alone for two months. I'll go away into the mountains with my friends and mourn, because I will die without getting married. You may go, he answered, and he sent her away for two months. She left, she and her friends, and mourned in the mountains that she would die unmarried. After two months she returned to her father, and he did with her what he had vowed, she had remained a virgin, so it became a law in Israel that the women of Israel would go every year for four days to lament the daughter of Yiftak from Gilad. <laughs>